on in here. All right, guys, this is for a world title. Now, I expect a good, clean fight. I want you to keep your punches up and obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Either one of you, touch them up and go back to your corners. Let's go. A little gut punch there from Gabe Rosado. These two men do not like each other. Let's see what happens when the bell rings. Arias has promised not to run. We'll see if he indeed lives up to that promise. Box. Scheduled for 12 in the middleweight division, Gabe Rosado in the red, Luis Cuba Arias in the white. What kind of fight do you think we're gonna see here? Well, with the amateur pedigree that Arias had, he had about 160 amateur fights. I expect him to use that knowledge and, and be a boxer puncher, because Gabe, we all know Gabe's a warrior, he's a blood and guts warrior, but he can also box as well. So I, I think it's not gonna be a war like most people expect. I think they're gonna respect each other until the first clean punch lands, and then I'm curious to see what happens. Good body shot there by Arias. Gabe Rosado coming off a nice performance. Went over Glenn Tapia. Six round TKO where he just outworked him, outboxed him, and just wore him down. Let's see if he can do that tonight against Arias, who's only been really tested once. That was in his last fight. A lopsided 12 round decision loss. Arias with two solid feints. Too bad the floorboards are loose and it's making too much noise, but the feints are, uh, are having their effect on Rosado. He bit on both of them, so I always like to see that in a fighter, feints. Almost looks like a springboard in there. Yeah, it's noisy. So you can't be really uh, stealth in there with those feints. You're supposed to be quiet. You know, those feints are supposed to bring, there's a good uh, counter that missed there. Uh, Rosado rolled nicely with that, but uh, with feints, they have to be quiet, you know, so this, this floorboard isn't really being too quiet. Luis Arias' nickname is Cuba. Although he was born and raised in Milwaukee, his dad moved from that country at the age of 13, his mom from Nicaragua. Both of them are great trainers in the corner. Gabe Rosado with Billy Briscoe. Arias with the two-time champion and John David Jackson. So they have greatness in the corner. Great body shot there by Arias. So far, I've been impressed with two things on Arias' part, the feints and the body shots. And what about the fact that he's the aggressor? I, ex I expected that right now because, look, like I said earlier, and I said this in the fighter meetings, Rosado is a blood and gut warrior, but he's also a timing fighter. He's a veteran in there. So he's not he's not going to go in there and show you all his cards and get aggressive. If you pull him into that fight and he has no other choice, then absolutely the warrior comes out. But he's also a boxer. When you think of Gabe Rosado, you think of him about bruised up and yes. cut and bloody. But he wanted to point out, he said, listen, I haven't been cut since 2014. Good shot right there by Rosado, even though it was blocked by Arias, but it still caught Arias' attention. And yes, I've been in the ring with Rosado, who spo sparred multiple times, and I was surprised with the fact that he wasn't as aggressive as, as I expected him. You know, I, we're used to seeing the blood and guts warrior and him being swollen and keep coming, but I didn't get that. I got a boxer puncher. Who won those sparring contests? You know who. Actually, it was pretty close. <laughs> so there's round one. Not a ton of action there, but a statement perhaps made there from Arias that he's not going to back up, he's not going to run. I like what I saw with Arias there. He was a, he was the aggressor there, but the smart aggressor. And Rosado actually wanted to fill him out there. He didn't really uh, show all his cards, but I think he lost that round. But it's okay. One round's no, no skin off his teeth. Yes, you did. And you know why? Because he didn't try to load up on it. Yeah. Steal the shot. Okay. One time when he comes in, if you catch him coming in, walk him to that right uppercut. Bing. But don't do it when you reach it. It's bing and slide off. You got me? But keep that jab working. Even if like I mentioned earlier, always this corner, he has a two-division champion in John David Jackson and a Philly legend in Billy Briscoe in Rosado's corner. And Rosado told him, hey, did I hurt him with that right hand? That's the one that I saw. It was, it was blocked, but it still had an effect. Gabe Rosado, by the way, is the son of a preacher. His mother, Bonnie Ortiz, is a doctorate and a full-time reverend. I said, what does she think about your colorful language that you use sometimes in these press conferences? He was like, ah, she's not a big fan. But I know she's watching right now at home. Says that, or at least Gabe told us that she's his number one fan. And Rosado also paying homage to his uh, Puerto Rican roots. He has uh, that Hector Camacho outfit on. Looking good, too, on Gabe. 
the winner of this fight, many believe, could get a world title shot. If not next, perhaps the fight after that. So not only is the, the $10,000 bet on the line here, but perhaps a future semi-lottery ticket up for grabs. Much better round so far by Rosado right here. He's landing. He tried to land that right hand again, even though Ari has blocked it both times. It's still catching his attention. But see, as I talked about earlier, Rosado can box. He's not just a, an aggressive, all-in-there brawler. You know, he can box. He's a boxer puncher first. As we mentioned earlier, Gabe Rosado has been in so many wars. Oh, there's a nice counter right from Rosado. I asked him, hey, how much is that taken out of you? How good are you now compared to what you were maybe four or five years ago? He said, listen, I'll be honest. I'm not as quick as I used to be, but my in-ring IQ is through the roof. And you heard him there conversing with his trainer. He's more of a technician now, trying yes, to play is. chess, not checkers. That's what I saw when we uh, when we sparred. I expected him to come forward and and uh, get hit a lot, but no, he was he was a uh, sly. He was a little bit more defensive than I thought. He was tricky. He had some Philly uh, tricks up his sleeve, and right here we could see it. He can box. He's using the ring well. He's landing some good shots, winning this round. But I also got to say, Arias is putting some heavy pressure on Rosado. That was a great body shot there, too. So I'd like to see how this fight plays out in the later rounds with that pressure on Arias' part. Called for more jabs from Rosado. He's been doing that this round. Good uppercut there by Gabe. Rosado's trying to get Arias to commit. That's why he's half, half with those punches. He's not really uh, extending those punches. He wants Arias to commit. That way Gabriel could come back and counter with the big shots. The left hook there. Arias goes down, strays a little low, but it was still a good shot. Caught Rosado's attention. Box, let's go. That round, you saw how crafty the warrior in Rosado could actually be. It was a good round for him. Is it, though, just a matter of time before this becomes no, more no. of a slugfest? Not if things keep going his way like it did in the second round. You know, he would, keep, he would like to keep the fight like this. If he can win in a boxing okay. session and, and, and give a clinic, great. But Arias wants to bring out the warrior okay. in him. Here we go with Arias having Gabriel was out on the ropes, lands a, a shot behind the head. That punch right there I talked about earlier caught Rosado's attention. You can't take too many of those as the fight keeps wearing on, especially the more tired you get. So those are good things on Arias' part and the feints as well. Right there we saw a feint because you really don't know when his attack is going to come if, if, if you're fighting for those feints. This should be a telling round because uh, Arias had a good first round. Gabe had a good second round. Both of them have a, a, a confident bounce in their step, and this is going to be a, a, a defining round to see who takes the lead. Round three scheduled for 12 here. Todd Grisham, Sergio Mora ringside. Several big fights still to come. You'll see Brandon Rios in action versus Shields, big baby Miller. Of course, Nico Hernandez, the bronze Olympic medalist from right here in Wichita. Arias is coming off a, a one-year layoff, and Gabriel Rosado is coming off a, over a one-year layoff, the longest in his career. But right now, I'm not seeing too many cowebs on, on both their part, especially Rosado, because he's the one boxing. Arias is just doing the stocking. But either way, not much of a ring rust that I'm seeing so far. Rosado with a rare feint right there, but he's boxing nicely. He's boxing smoothly, using the entire ring, not engaging with Arias. Good chopping right hand there by Kubas. Kubas has done pretty well cutting the ring off. He's had Rosado backed in the corner several times like he has right now. Not letting him out of there. Good footwork. Good left hook there. 
yeah. by Rosado. Cleanly caught Arias right there on the right side of his uh, cheek. That'll get you out of trouble. Good body shots there by Arias. I love the body shots that I'm seeing right here. And these are early, too. Yeah. I mean, in the third round, this is a 12-round fight. So if you're getting the attention of your opponent in the third round, already investing to the body, that's going to pay dividends as the round progresses. A lot like the jab. Exactly. You don't, you don't see the receipts of those jabs until the later rounds, and they start piling up. Good body shot there by Arias. Sneaky right hand to the body, too. You would think that was going to be an overhand right, and he uh, snuck it downstairs. And it landed. Good shot, but Rosado answered back. Yeah, body shot. Straight a little low, but it wasn't on purpose. Rosado caught it with the end of his elbow there. Either way, he has to be leery of those body shots. Rosado does. Rosado really hasn't sat down on many of his punches, whereas Arias, especially when he gets Rosado back in the corner, is letting him letting him fly. Rob Rosado's not known really of like a power puncher. He's not really known much of a boxer either, even though he's boxing nicely <laughs> What here. is he known for? <laughs> he's known as a blood and guts warrior, a guy that will go in there with anybody and give him a hard time. I mean, he's been to the top, fought for a world title twice already. So, I mean, he's, he's not an elite fighter, but he can compete with elite fighters if you give him an opportunity. Time! Well, at, job, this, guys. at this pace, as Arias throws some verbal jabs in the way of Rosado, I'll hold that thought for a minute. Right now, we go back to LZ Granders. Hey, what's up, guys? Look, a lot has been made about Arias and about personality that he has, and that he's a really big smack talker. This is true. We know about the big bet. We know how he's called everybody out. We know how he feels about himself. What we don't know is how he feels about himself in a lot of context, and this is what I mean. He listed Muhammad Ali as one of his most inspirational figures. I'm assuming it was about the smack talking that Muhammad Ali is famous for. But you'd be wrong. I was wrong. He actually spent much of the time talking about Ali and the sacrifices that he made, particularly during the prime of his career when he did not go to fight in Vietnam and could not fight and make money. He said that impressed him as a black man, that impressed him as a person, and taught him that he needed to be more than just a boxer. So he might be famous for his smack talk, but there's a lot more in there than just a smack talker. Back to you guys. Well, look, he did impress me in the fighter meetings. I, I thought he was a smack talker, too. But like he said, Arias was saying, look, I only spit facts. That's I'm telling you exactly what I see. He loses. Rosado loses every time he faces elite fighters or the top of their division. He's lost 10, 11 times already. So he's only spitting facts. But I, there's a flip side of that coin. Rosado does compete at times with the elite fighters, the championship fighters, and he always comes to fight. He's the people's champion. He's a, a fan favorite, and that's the reason he's here. But to Rosado's credit, he said about Arias, listen, he stepped up once. He's had one big-name fight, and he got dominated for 12 rounds. He has no business throwing shade at me. Here's some of the names Rosado's been in the ring with. How about Gennady Golovkin, Peter Quillen, David Lemieux, Jamel Charlo? I mean, these are huge names in the sport of boxing. And what Adia said is, yeah, so what? He loses every time he faces those guys, but look, that experience is priceless. Rosado landed a good right hand that caught Arias' attention, and he actually just shook it off and nodded it, which normally means that he... Uh, he got hit. He got rocked a little bit, so, it, I mean, a point's a point. Well, now you can see Rosado's kind of going forward more. Yes, he is. Fainting downstairs, coming up top. See, those, those are the shots that I want to see from Rosado. Not really loading up on him, just touching him. He's touching those gloves because he wants to get uh, Arias' attention, and he wants to counter once Arias throws a punch. So that's very smart by the veteran and Rosado. Clean right hand right there that's already been landing the entire fight. Good body shot there by Arias. He sat down on that one. Arias tried to get sneaky there. He uh, landed it downstairs and tried to uh, uh, faint downstairs and come up with a left hook, but Rosado didn't fall for it. Who do you think's winning this fight right now? It's even. Uh, first round, Arias. Rosado had the second round, and third round was kind of close. Fourth round is close. Competitive fight. Well, it appears that Rosado's landing more punches, but Arias is... Punches that are landing have a little bit more steam on them, as seen here. There's one on the right, a right shot to the left side of the head of Rosado, who now throws a few combinations. I think they're both fighting their fight. I mean, we uh, we see Rosado, like you said earlier, we always see him swollen and bloody and in and, and, and these wars, but he also has this side of him where he can actually box and use the ring, use his legs. Ari is on the other part, on the other hand, 
we know he's a boxer, but right now it looks like he, he wants to come in here and actually make a war out of this. He wants to bring that warrior out of Rosado, but Rosado's not letting him, which is a smart thing. Well, a Tiger can't change his stripes. You know, at some point, at some point in this fight, there'll be a moment where Rosado lets his hands go. I was about to say that. How long can he continue being a, a smart boxer, Rosado? Well, a good round it appeared this time for Rosado, who talks a little smack with Arias there at the end of the fourth round. You know, the thing about boxing which makes it so great, what I no matter what you think about your opponent, no matter what he says, you're allowed to hit him in the face. Yeah, yeah. As much trash talk as he wants to give at you, that's great. Go punch him in the face instead. And there's that right hand, the best punch of the round there for Arias. 28 years old, only one loss. Coming off a one-year layoff, fought Danny Jacobs back in November of 2017. Something, uh, someone I'm very familiar with, and uh, we talked about, me and Arias talked about, uh, was Jacobs the hardest puncher you've been in the ring with? And he said no, and I agree with him. He wasn't the hardest puncher, but he's the biggest middleweight that you've ever been in the ring with, because Jacobs goes up in weight a lot. Yeah, He's you a fought, strong, you fought, powerful guy. You fought him twice. You put him down on his backside in round one of your first fight. I was there for that. And then you broke your ankle, what, two rounds later? Tore a ligament. But Tore a ligament. Either way, I was uh, not you were, able... you were not walking. No, I was not. If you're just joining us, these two men in the build-up to this fight, led by Arias, who showed up with $10,000 cash this week and said, bet on yourself against me. Rosado said, OK, done. So hypothetically, they're each betting $10,000. We'll see if someone pays up when this is over with. Arias is just barely missing these overhand rights. Uh, he threw two of them in this round, and, and uh, Gabe hasn't even flinched or tried to move. I don't know if it's because he didn't see him or he's just so uh, comfortable with the distance already. Either way, Arias is trying to land a, a home run punches with the overhand right there. See how noisy that feint was because of the boards? I mean, those are supposed to be, you know, uh, sneaky stealth feints, but it's making a lot of noise with the loose floorboards. In between fights, we showed you Akambrak, who went and saw the new Creed 2. Of course, Gabe Rosado was in Creed 1, played Leo the Lion Sperino in good that fight. Good shot there by Arias. Did a pretty good job, too. He tried it again. Right there, Aria, uh, Rosado came in with a, an an uppercut left hook, but he caught in between by Arias. It was a good shot there, too. Caught Rosado's attention. He doesn't want to exchange hooks with Arias. I think Arias has a stronger hook. Well, Arias is getting a little wild. I wouldn't say wild. I, I would say that he's trying to land a harder hook, which is maybe a, a little bit more wider, but not, not wild, just wider. Wider, not wilder. There you go. Got it. Either way, there are counter-punching opportunities for Rosado here. Something he likes to do. There was a missed left hook. It's all about timing. It's always about timing. Do you find that as you progress in your career, your timing gets better the longer you're in the game? You're forced to rely on timing the older you get because your legs aren't the same. You know, when you're a young buck, you, you can miss, and, and you, it's not going to take too much of your legs. But the older you get, when you're missing those shots, you're not used to missing. Good body shot there by Gabe Rosado. Yeah. It was a sneaky left hook to the body. Um, so you rely on timing. You rely on maturity, you, that old bull mentality. So you're forced to have to adapt the older you get. Well, these rounds are not one-sided. Every round is pretty close, except for maybe the first that Sergio Mora gave to Arias. All right, break, break. Step time. I think another good round yeah. there by Rosado, but so Arias had his mo moments. I mean, they're We got to switch modes a little bit. Stay with the boxing. Yeah. Well, back this guy up. Okay. Back him up with a fast pace behind a long jab. All right? Back him up yes, with sir. a double jab. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And whenever he throws, he's going to fold left hook right hand. With Slide the earmuffs? With the earmuffs? With the, with the catcher's middle of the earmuffs. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Whatever you feel comfortable with.
right here we see the left hook that I saw earlier it was a clean left hook Rosado took it well we know that Rosado could take a, a big punch he has a beard under him but he doesn't want to take too many of those exchanges from Arias One thing about Dave Roz uh, Gabe Rosado that I see when I uh, sparred him, he has deceptive height. I, you know, he says that he's five foot eleven and a half, but he's more like six foot one, and he uh, fights at 147, 154 early in his career. He's just a tall junior middleweight, now a middleweight. And the other number that's deceptive is, of course, the 11 losses against the top of the top of the division and best fighters in the world. You may have heard Rosado's trainer, Billy Briscoe, saying, all right, let's be the aggressor this round. Let's back Arias up a little bit. See how he likes that. I like that advice because he's been boxing. Show him, show him the opposite side. We all know that Rosado can go in there and you know, bang it out with everyone, but we're not expecting him to box. So he boxed the few, first couple of rounds, not go in there and back this kid up. Said they want to see that double jab which is not going to be an easy thing to do because Arias is the one that going forward landing what looks to be the more harder shots and, and Rosado has been boxing more. So as we're seeing right now, he's not following his trainer's instructions and backing up Arias right, and that's step step probably for a reason. He's Watch feeling Arias punches. Let's go. Referee warning Arias about a punch to the back of the head. Pretty strong punch too. Right there, Arias tried to land that sneaky left hook again. Yep. Rosado caught it, but Rosado needs to be careful with that shot because it's a sneaky left hook that's coming in between the shots. I think Arias landed a right hand there. Now things are getting a little more active between the two. Because Rosado still is backing up. He's not following right, his trainer, back, back, Coach Briscoe's uh, instructions to back Arias up. You want to see how Arias fights going back on his back foot. Maybe he's not going to be as aggressive. The mustard's not, not going to be behind those punches, the strength. Good body shot there by Arias. See, another one there. Hitting both sides of the body right there on Arias' part. A little uppercut from Rosado lands. Big He's, swing and a miss. Arias, Arias has done that several times. Arias went for the home run there because he landed those two clean body shots, and he thought Gabe was going to fall for that one, but, you know, Gabe's too experienced to fall for something like that. Much better round here by Arias. I, I have him... Uh, Winning this round so far, coming forward, landing some hard shots, upstairs and downstairs. Good left hook there by Gabe Rosado. But he's still not backing up Arias. He's not doing what his trainer, uh, Coach Briscoe, wanted him to do. Chopping right hand there. Those hurt. Sneaky left hook yep. again. That's been the best punch of the fight tonight, has been that left hook, especially on the inside from Luis Arias. Rosado may have landed the uh, cleaner shots, but the more effective shots, in my opinion, have been those uh, uh, little inside left hooks on Arias' part. Good body shot there, a little borderline, but it was a good body shot there by Arias. He returns it again. Good round for Arias. Well, you said Rosado's done a very good job of being patient, not turning into a Time. brawler, just boxing. But at some point, does maybe he need to do that a little bit? Not yet. I mean, Brisco, uh, Coach well, Briscoe wanted him to go forward, which he didn't do that round because it's harder. It's easier said than done. But if he's falling behind on points, of course, he's going to have to bring that warrior out and go forward and take more risk. And, and uh, that's what Rosado's not doing yet. Rosado dipping that jab, countering to the body, which is rare, but right there, Arias was waiting for that counter shot and caught, caught him with a clean right hook. And here's the hook that I, I talked about earlier. Not that one. It was another one in the exchange. It caught him cleanly. And here's the body shot, chopping right hand that missed. That was low. It was a little low, and it was blocked by Rosado's part, too. So things change when you see them in slow motion, but the referees don't have that advantage of, of, of watching it in slow motion. A good body shot, all in all. So we've reached the halfway point, six rounds in the books between Arias and Rosado. Is this the kind of fight you thought we'd see? Yes, actually I did. I mean, Arias has, like I mentioned earlier, 160 amateur fights. He was a two-time national champion, so he has that pedigree behind him. Uh, and Rosado, we just know him as a 
bloody warrior that will fight anyone. But right now we're getting like the opposites. Rosado's doing the boxing, shows like he has the, the boxing pedigree, and Arias is the one coming forward wanting to make this into a bloody uh, 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 war type fight. Well, Arias turned heads in his first kind of step up fight when he faced Arif Magomedov back in 2017, knocked him out in the fifth round. Then got that main event, that big shot against Daniel Jacobs, which didn't go his way. So this is his shot to stay kind of in the upper echelon of this division. And if he beats Gabe Rosado, who's to say he doesn't fight for a world title sometime in 2019? I mean, that's been a lifelong role for Gabriel Rosado. He's always been the B-side. He's never been the guy that's expected to win. Uh, that's why people like him. I mean, that's why he's the people's champion. But Arias, on the other hand, he had a successful amateur career. You know, that loss was only to Daniel Jacobs, uh, one of two of the best middleweights in the world right now. So it's not a shame that he lost to Jacobs. It's the way that he fought against Jacobs that's shameful. But, yes, like you said, this is a big opportunity for um, Arias to, to get this victory and move on to a bigger, possibly another title shot. Halfway through round seven, neither corner can feel great about being ahead at this point. No, not at all, and I don't think they expected that right now. This is a much quieter round. I like the way that uh, Rosado's touching Arias. It's a quiet round. I think Arias is probably taking it off, or he's trying to uh, plant his feet and land something hard. Either way, Rosado's not letting him. Good head movement. Good ring generalship, good jabs. Nice round for uh, Gabriel Rosado here. Rosado threw a triple jab there. As Teddy Atlas told me one time, the only thing better than a jab is a double jab. The only thing better than a double jab is a triple jab. Nice overhand good right there shot. for Arias. And good body shot there by Arias, too. Now he's got Gabe back in the corner. This time. Ooh. Rosado tried to land a great counter uppercut right there. It missed, but if it would have landed, it would have been sweet right there. It was like a, a, a crisp uppercut after you caught the left hook from Arias. I love the way Rosado's boxing right here. He's not really putting much pop in between those punches. He's, he's actually just catching his attention and boxing beautifully this round. All right, Brad, step back, step back. Early. I mean, we expect Box. fighters to take a round off in a 12-round fight, and I think Arias is taking this. He took this round off and gave it to Rosado, but Rosado didn't just uh, uh, let him have it. I mean, Rosado won this round with beautiful boxing. Time! Go out that side. Okay. Go off the right hand, go off the right side. Okay. You got me? Yeah. Bing, bing, bing. Fill in the spot with the combination. Yeah, yeah. Don't go big, four and five, you get caught in between. But two and three, you can definitely steal. Okay. Am I right? Then when you get inside with him, bang the body and go out the side door. Okay, okay. All right? Yes, sir. Great advice there by Billy Briscoe in Rosado's corner. He says, you're throwing two, three shots, but watch out for the counter, because that's the counter that Arias has been trying to land from the beginning of this fight, and it's been effective. He's, ooh, both, Boy, they both threw there. big right hands. That was Rocky type, yeah, well, Rocky one type right there, and uh, earlier Gabe tonight, Rosado. We saw a double knockdown that wasn't because the ref didn't call it, but two guys landing a punch at the same time, and they both went down. And Gabe Rosado, being from Philly, knows that, knows that well. The Rocky course, analogy. There's been a lot of world champions from Philadelphia, but Milwaukee, where Arias is from, there's only been one, Pinky Mitchell, at 140 pounds back in the early 1920s. But what Arias does have, even though he is from Milwaukee, a quiet town when it comes to boxing, he has that amateur pedigree, as I mentioned earlier, a two-time national champion, a veteran of 160 fights as an amateur so he has that confidence something that Rosado didn't have as an amateur I believe he only had about 15 amateur fights right started boxing at 18 years old so he learned on the job Rosado did he said he started at 18 had 15 amateur fights so he said listen I've, you may think I've been in all these wars and I have but 
for 32 years old, I don't feel like my body's beaten down because I didn't, I didn't really fight much when I was young. And it's hard to believe that considering he's been in so many wars, but look at how he's boxing right now. I mean, you got you to take him for his word. He's boxing really nicely, something we normally don't see from Gabe. He's not a good body shot there by Arias, but even though Rosado is winning this fight just by landing punches, they're not hard punches, but he's winning the rounds, and he's boxing nicely. He's not standing in front of Arias to, to land something hard. Good body shot there by Arias, but is it enough? Because uh, Rosado's landing more punches, more volume punches, but the effective harder shots on, on Arias part. Good one two there for Arias. Good jab. Haven't seen a lot of those from him. Well, it's it's not the all action slugfest that some fans were hoping for. And that's because Rosado's not allowing Arias to have that slugfest, which is smart on his part. But Arias needs to find a way to win regardless. If, if Rosado's not going to turn into the warrior he normally does, well, then guess what? you got to become the warrior if you're Arias's part, something he didn't do against Daniel Jacobs. Oh, so nice counterpunch there for Rosado. So Arias, if he is not getting what he wants out of Rosado, well, you got to force him to give you what you want. Something we're not seeing in the last two rounds. Good, another good round by Rosado. Yeah, maybe the best round of the fight for Gabe. Looking pretty, Time. looking pretty, looking smooth, looking confident. Well, DAZN obviously the home of boxing, but also MMA. Bellator headed your way live December the 15th. It's Bellator 213 from Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah, the practice gets worth it when the practice makes perfect, make perfect. You gotta earn it, you gotta sacrifice and be assertive to be the greatest. Stay humble, stay focused, don't stumble. And you best be ready to rumble, come with the lion's heart in the jungle. For visually a symphony, express myself implicitly and willfully. Get what I want and I will show my souls alive. And I will show my souls alive. Women's flyweight title on the line. Also the return of Lyoto Machida, December 15th, the same night, by the way, that DAZN will have the debut on DAZN of Canelo <laughs> Alvarez. Good, good one there, Thank Grisham. You. So what's the plan now for both of these corners? Let's start with Arias. Well, look, John David Jackson is, I'm assuming, not liking what he's seeing out of Arias. Right here, Wait a minute, Rosado thinks he may have him in trouble a little bit. Cuba back, he gets a rope, and there's an uppercut for Rosado. Right, right, step back, turn loose, turn loose. Don't be holding on when I tell you to turn loose. Look, Arias, he talked the talk, but right now he's not walking the walk. Something he didn't do against Daniel Jacobs, and he's not doing right now. Another uppercut, Gabriel and Rosado. a third. Here comes Rosado. He's going for the finish here. Arias in trouble, he's right, holding right, right, on. Step back. Don't be holding on now, you're holding on. Let's go, box. The tide has officially turned here in round nine. Let's see if Gabe goes for it here. Or is he patient? Does he reset here? His corner shouting at him to throw the jab. Break, break, step back. Turn line. Let's go. Box, let's go. Box. Arias' legs still don't look 100%. Look a little wobbly right now. The foundation, not what it once was, for sure. Rosales had two good rounds. Now he's having another big round here in the ninth. You would think that Arias is going to get a little uh, worried here. I, I know that his trainer, John David Jackson, wants him to do a little bit more, but he's falling behind, in my opinion. Needs to do something here, Arias does. He looks a little fatigued as well. Maybe that's from throwing all those big punches and wide shots, some of them not landing. That's exactly why, Todd. That's exactly right. When you miss a shot, you you uh, lose a lot more steam, and the legs come out of you. Come on, let's go, let's go, box. Interesting that Gabe Rosado really hasn't thrown many uppercuts this fight, but this round, that's been his go-to punch, and it's paying dividends. Good shot there by Arias, but he didn't follow it up. He didn't follow up with nothing. Watch your hit in the back of the head. Missed with the left hook right there. Another uppercut from Rosado. And those are the ones that take it out of you. If you're wondering why he looks a little bit fatigued, it's because of those misses right there. Like, see Rosado right there, he had Arias on the ropes, but he didn't load up. 
Right there, he loaded up. Right, 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 right. But that's a smart veteran right, move on right, his let's part. Let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go. Rosado thought that was a cheap shot there for Maria, so see if he can punish him for it. We wondered what Rosado would look like when right, he pressed early. forward, but and now we're now. seeing go, box. he looks pretty darn good, Sergio. Yes, he does, and his trainer was right because he's looking better coming forward than boxing. Good jab there for Cuba. Luis Cuba Arias. You know, you got to hand it to Billy Briscoe, uh, Gabe Rosado's longtime trainer. He knows this fighter well. He knows when to box. Ooh, well, there's a barely missed, barely missed the right hand, and there's that sneaky left hook on Arias' part. So Rosado, this is the reason why he can't just oh, go in there. Oh, and a big right hand for Rosado hey, right at hey. the bell, and a couple punches afterwards. Arias shakes it off, but Rosado now in pole position going into the final stretch. Rosado's looking good. I have him ahead in this fight. I think the momentum's going in his way. He's looked good going backwards you mean, and forwards. You mean Rosado? Rosado. He's been, Rosado's been looking good boxing, being the, the, the pressure fighter. He just looks like the momentum's going his way. The confidence is going his way. But look, Arias did all the talking in the press conference. He did all the talking on social media. Here, the stage is here. What are you going to do? It's a 12-round fight. It's time for you to get going. And remember, there's some money on the line. They, I mean, they bet $10,000 on a side bet. See who's going to collect that money. And right now, Rosado's looking good. That right hand was blocked by uh, Arias, but still had effect. It looked bad on his part. Rosado's been looking good the last three, four rounds. Yeah, sometimes it's not what shots land, it's what shots the judges think you landed. Yes. And that one was very deceiving. Either way, round nine could be the turning point of this fight. Three rounds to go here in the middleweight division. A possible title shot could be on the line here. Both men certainly believe that. They told us in the fighter interviews. If I was Arias, I would think I would need a, an important round here to, to sway things right back my way. He's starting off with the pressure like he did earlier in the fight, but he needs to land the punches. Good oh, there's uppercut. an uppercut from him. Good uppercut by Arias, but I want to see him follow up on it. He's been landing good single shots, but I want to see him put combinations behind that because Gabriel's been the one landing the better combinations. Not as powerful as Arias, but he's been landing the volume, which is important. Mark Brett, step back. Turn loose. Turn loose. But hold on. And Let's as impressive back. as that round was for Rosado, it's still just a 10-9 round. Yeah. Those earlier pedestrian rounds are scored exactly the same, so the scorecard should still be really close. Good right hand there by Arias. Gabe took it well. I think Gabe is taking this round off because he had a big, he had a good two, three rounds where he won decisively, in my opinion, and it looks like he's taking this round off. Yeah, but can you afford to take this round off? There's only three left, Serge. Normally in a 12-round fight, you have to take one round off. You know, you catch your second win. It's hard to do that. And if you're in control like Gabriel was in the last three, four rounds, yeah, right now is the time to do it. And then come back strong in the 11th and 12th round, the championship rounds, which Gabe Rosado is more accustomed to being in the championship rounds than Arias is. See those overhand rights? Ours has been all trying right, to land those right, overhand right, rights right, from the down. beginning of the fight, go, and they've box, all been go. missing. They take a lot out of you. I would like to see him uh, concentrate on the body. If you're going to throw those, those uh, swinging wide punches, throw them to the body where at least you're going to hit something. For Rosado, it seems it's been the jab and the uppercut. What's the punch that Arias needs to turn to now? He's been landing good single shots. I would like to see more like combinations. When he lands a clean shot, well, guess what? You landed. Land something else. But he's. it, it seems like he's satisfied with that one punch, and it's not doing enough. Good they're, body work there for Arias. There, finally, he landed more than one good shot. He landed four or five good body shots there. That's what I want to see more out of him. If you can't land upstairs, because look, here's another thing I learned when sparring Rosado. He's tougher to hit upstairs than I thought. You know, you always see him in these bloody wars, but he has good, pretty good head movement, and he slips shots really well, and he rolls with the punches really well. But guess what? Go downstairs. And that's what Arias did right there. But still, in my opinion, wasn't around enough to, Don't hit him back to, the head. Break, to do back. Uh, win this round. Give me a clean break. Let's time. Two rounds to go. Who do you have winning at home? Would love to know. Use the hashtag DAZN. 
on your social media. You know, this fight's going to come down to, you know, do you like the uh, the pressure, the aggressive coming forward, Arias, or do you like the guy, like right there, he landed a good shot right there, or do you like the boxing, moving back and picking the shots of Rosado? It's a close fight, both of them landing clean shots, but the hardest shots is Arias. But it's interesting because during that sequence, we just talked about how the, it's, you know, what the judges think you got hit with. You were impressed by the body work. It looked like Rosado blocked all those shots and snuck in a quick left hook that we didn't see. That's what I've been watching. So when I'm watching a guy box, I want to see the counters that he's landed. And when I see a guy coming forward like Arias, I want to see is it effective aggression. As a boxer myself, when guys come forward, that's not enough for me nice to respect right. them. Nice right there for Arias. We're in the championship rounds. Gabe Rosado and Luis Cuba Arias. A personal $10,000 bet between the two and a possible world title shot on the line. Nice right hand there for Arias, backs Rosado up. And a good counter left hook there by Arias, which Rosado blocked. He's been blocking it most of the time, but they're still effective punches. Just throw your shots. Even if they're being picked off or blocked, they're still effective, especially in the later rounds. So Gabe Rosado had that great round nine, but the 10th looked like it might have gone to Arias, and he's having a good 11th here. So. Rosado may need to win both these rounds. It's a close fight. Right, right. It's back, a close fight. Box, let's go. And that's why these these last two rounds are called championship rounds because it brings out the champion out of uh, one fighter or the other. So who's going to want it more? It's a close fight. You've got to set yourself apart like a champion. Is this the time maybe that Rosado kind of smacks the floor and says, let's go? <laughs> yeah, why and not? I mean, we're so used to seen him do it good right hand there countered by Arias. It was, it was kind of a push punch, but it's still a good good punch landed. Break, break, break. Step back. In a close fight, you would body. want that bravado to come out. Box. If you wanted to come out, you wanted to come out now because it is a close fight. Good body shot there by Arias. All right, break. Step back. Box. Rosado told us how great his conditioning has been. He looks a little bit fresher right now. Good counter right by Arias. And he landed both a of, right hand. Both of them landed right hands, but Arias was okay, shorter. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Box. Boy, Arias is throwing those hands out there a, a long way. There's some counter punching Good opportunities right for Rosado, but that's Arias with a counter shot. Good right hand. I think that right hand that he pawed out like that was not really to land. He wanted uh, Rosado to commit to something. He wanted to counter with a left hook, in my opinion. Another close round here in Kansas. Now coming forward is Rosado. The round could be won here in the last 30 seconds for sure. Close round. Here we go. Good right hand by Rosado earlier right there, but it is a close round. It's up for grabs here. This is where you want to see those Sugar Ray Leonard steal around flurries right. by any fighter. Because in close rounds, whoever just closes out in a flashy fashion is going to get the round. That's how he beat Marvelous. Here we go. Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler won all, basically all those rounds in the last 10 seconds. Hagler was furious that he didn't get that decision. Nice right hand there for Rosado. Break, break, break. Hey, don't be hitting him in the back of the head. Three minutes to go. He gave that round away too. We need this round. You gotta stay on. You gotta stay on him, okay? You gotta stay on him. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang. You gotta stay on him, okay? You gotta move your hands. You gotta stay on him. He's gonna do one or two things. He's gonna. There's a counter right there for Arias. Best punch of the round for sure. But Rosado had his moments as well. Right there. Chopping right hand there, but I think the cleaner shots there were by Arias. In a close round, you know, it might come down to the end right here. Good, oh. good overhand right that finally landed for Arias, that home run punch right there. 
but it might come down to this 12th and final round. Billy Briscoe told Rosado, you got to stay on him. Get right in his face and let your hands go. Let's see if he can do it here with three minutes to go in this fight. They're finally unleashing the warrior of Gay because we haven't seen the warrior. We've seen a smart warrior in there, but I think it's time for him to let everything go here. It's the 12th round. Hold nothing behind if you're Gabriel Rosado. And if you're Arias, don't think you're ahead on this in, in this fight either. It's a close competitive fight. I would think both of them think they need this last round to win the fight. And there's a cut that just opened up over the right eye of Arias. I think it was probably a clash of heads. I'm not really sure there, but they were inside wrestling, so it was probably a clash of heads. Either way, if, if one guy was going to be cut tonight, you wouldn't think it'd be Arias. Rosado's known for bleeding. If Rosado can get out of a 12-round fight, blood three, it's a rarity. Well, he's got blood on him, but it's not his own for once. Under two to go now. That cut is obviously bo bothering Arias. No, no, break, break. He's pawing no, 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 at it, sets up to the referee. Box. Trying to blink it out, pawing at it again. Let's see if Rosado goes in here and tries to win this round. And the fact that Rosado's not bleeding in a 12-round fight is a testament oh, oh, to oh, how right. good don't he's don't been don't boxing. Don't hit it. Oh, told you don't hit it. Look at my shit, man. Box. Good left hook there by Arias, but is it enough? Because momentum right now, if body language tells me anything, it's Arias that's looking like the beaten fighter, even though it's a close fight. But Rosado looks like the confident fighter, the clean fighter, coming forward, looking and picking for his shots. Arias looking a little nice bit more Nice left desperate. hand, connecting there for Rosado. Great. Quit hitting him in the back of the head. Come on, A glance up to the clock there for Arias. He's got a minute to go. Another quick left hand there for Rosado. Yeah, as a fighter, I'm looking at Arias, and he looks like the, he wants his fight to be over. And for Rosado, he smells blood, literally. Here we go. Turn Box. And sometimes, look, in a close fight, image is everything. So if I'm a judge, I'm looking at the way Arias is looking, his body language. He's, right, he, he looks like the body language. He's a beaten fighter. He's a Come bloody on, fighter. Rosado not in. bleeding, coming forward, looking for the big shots. Body language right, right, says a lot back, in close back. fights. Box. Good body shot there by Rosado. Sneaky body shot. And he goes back down to the body. That's just the, the veteran and Rosado coming out. He knows that if he can't land. Whoa. Him, both of them miss, but Arias got the, the oh, piece there's of There's a right there. hand that lands for Rosado. And another one. And a third. Ten seconds break, to break, go. Break, break. Watch that hand. And that will do it. In Kansas, Arias says good scrap. Rosado just wants to get away from him. And he'll go to the judges' scorecards. What's your gut tell you? Listen, I wouldn't be upset with a draw. I would hate to see a draw, of course. We want to see who won. Everyone hates a stalemate. But I think, pun intended, King Rosado might have taken this one. Well, he's getting on the top rope here and celebrating, whereas Arias is getting his cut tended to. Rosado just looked at Sergio and said, hey, did you got me? Did I win? I nodded my head yes, because I have it either he won by one round or a draw. I can also possibly see a draw. I don't want to see a draw, but Rosado by one point would be the, the right call in my book. Well, let's see how that cut opened up. I believe it was from a clash ahead, and there it is right there, Sergio. It was definitely... Definitely uh, something that we didn't want to see because that blood just hinders you. It, it, it really takes it out of you as a fighter because you're wiping and pawing away from it. But you gotta, you gotta deal with this uh, uh, adversity. So if you're Arias, if that took it out of you in a close fight, then you're not meant to fight in the championship round. Hey, and the what good thing about that cut is that it came in the last round. Imagine if that had happened in round eight or nine. Exactly, so if that cut took it out of you in the last round, you don't want to see what happens if that fight happens? I mean, that's adversity. You have to face that if you want to become a champion. Ak and Barack over there in my corner. And I believe Ak thinks that Arias won that fight. So everyone here with mixed views of what just took place. But obviously there are only three people whose scores matter, and they are the official judges. Gabe Rosado fighting for the first time in 13 months. 
He's had issues with cuts in the past. He said he hadn't been cut since 2014. He's had issues with his left eye swelling. But tonight, at least for Gabe Rosado, he comes out of this almost scot-free. Almost he is. He looks, I mean, a little bit of swelling. But for, for Gabe Rosado to come out of a fight with no bruises, nothing broken, nothing bloody, that's a success. That's a victory from the King Gabe well, Rosado. There. If he loses this fight, though, there will be those that said, listen, you can't fight this way. You're not going to win. Sure, you don't get beat up. You don't get you don't get scratched. But you're not winning. No, no, no. This will, this is boxing. This is boxing. I think Rosado boxed well early. He showed the warrior in him in, in the middle of the rounds. I think he fought the smart fight. He edged out this decision, in my opinion. But it was a close fight. Gabe Rosado is asking everyone if they have gum. Here's David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Kansas Star Arena, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. David Sutherland, 116-112, Luis Arias. Mike Munoz, 116-112, Gabriel Rosado. And Karen Holderfield scored this contest. 104, 104, we have a split draw. It's 114, 114 split draw, which I can't complain about. I said either it's a draw or Rosado won this fight, but it wasn't 104, 104, 114, 114. It's a draw. Well, there you have it. So the loser was supposed to pay the winner $10,000, but no one loses. No one pays the money and no one goes home happy.